Medicine has had major breakthroughs in the last couple of years in all sorts of fields, and it has become much less brutal than it was in historical times. Then, things were much stranger and a lot more dangerous, so be grateful for the medicine that you have today. From bloodletting to mystics, stay tuned to number one to find out which medical practice may have killed more people than it saved. Number 10. Urine as an Antiseptic I think the title says it all, but we'll elaborate. Thomas Vickery, Henry VIII's surgeon, recommended that all battle wounds be treated with urine as an antiseptic, whether it was the soldiers or not. Then, in 1666, George Thompson, a popular physician, said that people should use urine against the plague. Strangely enough, you could buy it under the name of Essence of Urine, which was basically just a bottle of the liquid. As disgusting as this might be, urine has had many utilizations throughout the years. Some doctors even claimed that urine should be drank for medical purposes. However, back then, the water that they had access to was not usually purified or even as drinkable as it is nowadays, so urine may have been a healthier choice for some unfortunate people. Number 9. Bloodletting Back in medieval times, even the most renowned and highly trained doctors thought that sicknesses came from having bad blood in your system. Therefore, when people came to doctors with illnesses or different diseases, they were often diagnosed with an overabundance of blood. In order to restore harmony in your blood balance, the only way to do that was to cut a vein open and let some of the person's vital fluids drain into a container. After some years, leeches started being used to drain blood from the victims. Scary enough, these keepers of leeches and bloodletting devices were more often than not barbers. That's right, step up for today's special of a haircut and bloodletting. Of course, this wasn't safe at all, and many deaths occurred simply from too much blood loss. Surprisingly, it became a common practice as late as the 19th century for doctors to prescribe blood draining for everything from sore throats to even the plague. Number 8. Egyptians and Their Animal Cures For as advanced of a civilization as they were, the Egyptians have always been known to have some weird cures for their diseases by using all sorts of dead animals. Whether we're talking about lizard blood, dead mice, or even horse saliva, very strange components have been used in the medical treatments. Actually, the Egyptians were also eating mice in pie or cooked because they thought it would purify their hearts. Of course, no doubt that these treatments would usually lead to things like tetanus or all sorts of infections. However, they were, from time to time, efficient and would occasionally cure an illness. Interestingly enough, it was recently found that the microflora found in some types of animals contain antibiotic substances. Hmm, maybe those cures weren't so weird after all. For more information about the Egyptians, check out our video describing life in ancient Egypt. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can always stay up to date on new videos from Zero to Hero. Number 7. Eye Surgeries Surprisingly, there were eye surgeries in the medieval times as well. Crazy enough, surgeons were even attempting to do extremely advanced techniques such as cataract surgery. However, these methods weren't perfected until very recently. Some of the key differences in the versions of this surgery start off as simply as anesthetic. As in, they didn't use any in medieval times. Maybe a glass of bitter wine if you went to a well-known doctor, but that of course cost more. They did know something though. By pushing the opaque lens back into the lowest part of the eye, it would create a clearer pupil. But unfortunately, that would also leave the patient with an unfocused eye, similar to a camera with no lens. To get a broader understanding, they'd only be able to see huge letters, but not actually read anything but they would still be able to do their household chores. Number 6. Cutting Tongues If you've ever heard the word hemiglycectomy, you know that that's what medieval doctors did to their patients when they came in with a major medical issue in their mouth, such as oral cancer. However, this technique was also used for basically any mouth disease. The hemiglycectomy is basically the act of cutting off half of your tongue in order to survive. 
it became a standard practice back in the 18th and 19th century, and doctors have confirmed that it has shown results and is a great way to get rid of diseases. Well, duh, you just cut off your tongue. Anyway, it was so painful that many of the people who had this procedure died instantly or entered a coma because of the pain. And the 1800s wasn't always the best time to survive a coma, assuming they didn't bury you alive. Number 5. Astrology Back in medieval times, astrologers were so revered that many thought they were real-life magicians. The truth is, they were respected scholars who advised on increasing crop yields, predicted the weather, and informed a family what sort of personality their child would have. Historically speaking, doctors would refer to special calendars that contain star charts in order to aid with diagnosis. By the 1500s, physicians in some parts of Europe were legally required to assess a patient's horoscope before embarking on any medical interference. Astrology suggests that each body part is influenced by the sun, the moon, and planets, and that each star sign presides over different parts of the body. The constellation Aries, for example, pertains to the head, face, brain, and eyes, whereas Scorpio represents the reproductive systems, sexual organs, bowels, and excretory system. After the patient's star chart was examined and the current position of the stars was taken into account, a person's ailment could be predicted and a diagnosis would be made. As weird as this may be, they were oftentimes right. That's why they had so much faith in astrologists. Number 4. Rituals In some ancient cultures, there were people who were referred to as healers, who used sort of a combination of pagan, religious, and scientific techniques. Of course, as the church started to gain more trust and more respect, they forbid many of these rituals, making them a punishable offense. According to the manual corrector and physician, though, all types of strange things needed to be taken into account from the moment the healer approached the home. For example, if a stone was lying near the home, the healer would flip it over to look for different types of insects. Each insect meant something slightly different, but if it moved, it was taken as an omen that the sick person would recover. This sounds like an accurate way to determine whether or not you're going to live. People who came across horrible diseases were told to perform penance. Penance, as you might know, is the practice of admitting to your sins and performing a variety of rituals as prescribed by your priest. Many religious followers were told that they might escape from death if they would confess their sins correctly. I guess if it didn't work, at least you died with a clear conscience. Number 3. Clisters this was extremely popular back then, and even royal families used this technique. One king, King Louis XIV, even had 2,000 clisters in his reign. You may know this technique under a different name. Today, they're called an enema. King Louis was even known to hold up court while he was receiving his treatments. It actually became so popular that people would start using them just to be in trend, rather than for different health-related purposes. A clister was a long metal tube that was introduced into the rectum. It had a hole on the top, where doctors would then put medications, syrups, or any other treatments that they felt that the patient needed. The physicians would perform a lot of pushing motions that would force the medication to go into the colon area. Sounds fun. Number 2. Hemorrhoids if you have ever had the misfortune of experiencing hemorrhoids, you know how painful they are and the excruciating pain you must endure in order to get rid of them. However, this just might make you grateful that you didn't live in the medieval times because it was so, so much worse. To give you an idea of just how bad it was, know that a hot iron poker was involved. Doctors would usually use cautery irons in order to deal with the problem by burning and pulling out the hemorrhoid while the patient sometimes literally died of pain. However, Hippocrates has suggested that people should simply pull out their own hemorrhoids with their nails, a thing which again would be excruciatingly painful for most to endure. These treatments were so horrific that most people would just agree to live with the pain of the hemorrhoids and hope for a miracle to one day occur. Interestingly enough, an Irish monk from the 7th century known as St. Fiocri was the patron saint for hemorrhoids. The story behind him is that one day, he sat on a simple stone which gave him the miraculous cure everyone was looking for. 
Even nowadays, many people go and sit on that same stone in hope for the cure. As you'd expect, most of them are not magically cured, and the ones that are probably have used a lot of medication before they sat on the stone. Number 1. Medieval Anesthesia Fun fact! Anesthesia was found only about 150 years ago, so medieval people did not have the benefit of using it. However, historic physicians found out different ways to sedate their patients, including combinations of herbs that would be used to calm them down or knock them out. This cocktail would include lettuce and vinegar, but potentially even deadly poisons such as hemlock and opium. The most common name of this anesthesia was known as dwell, and sometimes it may have been better to just have the surgery fully awake and alert than to risk taking the anesthesia at all. An unfortunate combination of these ingredients could easily lead to the patient's death. Of course, the use of anesthesia was optional, and the patients took the full risk for what happened to them. Anyway, tell us what you think about these ancient medical practices in the comments below, and take care!